Hello again here, it's Jimmy at O'Reilly's Mobile Mechanics and we have today come to look at this Volvo uh, C30, it's a 1.6 diesel. So the first thing I'm going to do is plug in the diagnostic port which is just down there. Now he's already had this at a garage and I've told him it needs a uh, DPF cleaning so let's start it up and see what sort of lights we have on. Engine management. Service overdue. Skip that. Okay, we've got plenty of diesel, which is good. That's it. So just um, we'll have to plug in the. We've got the diagnostics plugged in. So let's switch it on and uh, go through the car. So we'll do an automatic selection. And read the VIN. Okay, let's pause that. I don't know why there's so much glare on this screen, but uh, yeah, we have four faults there. Let's see what we've got glow relay, faulty signal, particle filter blocked, particle filter too high, uh, EGR valve too, flow too low. So there's a few different issues here. Um, so we ha what we have come to do now today is to clean the particle filter. Um, the problem is some people don't mention that you need a glow plug relay um, and an EGR valve. So we're going to have to um, advise that we're going to need to do those. Otherwise he won't have any warranty on his DPF clean today. And it also will need an oil change as well. So here we have the engine, it's the 1.6 HDI that you see in Fords and Peugeots. So we've got a little couple of 10mm bolts here to get the engine cover off. Most Volvos have got this little handy little compartment here that you can store your bolts in. <laughs> now we'll take the engine cover off. A little bit stuck on this side. Grommet there. Yep. So the first thing I'm going to want to do here is I'm going to take off this uh, pressure sensor here. So I'm just opening the T25 screw here. So here we have the particle filter with zero pressure there. So I just connected my MIDI back here to this side and that's from this tube that if you follow that down it runs just to the top of the catalyst and particle filter there. So we've got that connected onto our pressure uh, MIDI back and we're going to increase the pressure on here and see if it increases on the screen. So we'll get that up to like 10. That's dropping now. Release the pressure there. Sorry, it's a little bit blurry the screen, but yeah, that seems to be working. So, yeah, I don't know if you could hear me there over the engine, but now that's back to zero when we'd have released the pressure there on the MIDI vac. Uh, this, this just forces uh, vacuum pressure in. You can uh, you can put pressure or vacuum it out. So we we now have a narrow down that that is working. So we will now use this pipe that we've already disconnected to put our DPF cleaning fluid in. Uh, just a quick little word on these engines. I, I, I do like these engines. I think they're quite a good engine. But in some vehicles, they're quite hard to access. Um, most Volvos, um, they're a little bit easier to access because you can just come over the back here. And look at that, you can just see the jar valve down there. On some Peugeots, especially the smaller ones, it's the front of the engine cover comes to about here. All of this, um, the scuttle. 
and it takes a lot of effort to get down there but this one is quite easily accessed so what I'll do is just see jar valve down there I'll leave that for another video this video is concentrating uh, just on obviously whatever the title says is going to be for it which is cleaning the DPF so we're using five liters of this winds DPF cleaner and we are putting it into this it's a braking clutch bleeder we bought it specifically just to use for this because it's high pressure it pumps high pressure fluid out so we'll fill this with DPF fluid and we're going to get this pumped into the car so just connected this little um, pressurized bottle up to the DPF hose here that's the hose that came off of this section of the, of the pressure center here the one that says high on it and this one runs to the top top end and then that other smaller tube goes all the way down a little bit further so you've got one before the, the catalyst and dpf and then one after it so the one before the dpf and cat system we're going to pump it in and that will flush its way all the way down and flush out the dpf so i like to build the pressure up quite high on that so it pushes it in really fast when you push it in fast it, it frots up nice um now we are just about empty we can hear it sort of spitting i'm gonna pull it out Whee! it's snowing in summer right we'll put this away now we'll let that sit for about 15 20 minutes okay so what i've set up now is my multimeter i'm going to test the glow plug circuit uh, to verify if it's the relay or the actual glow plugs themselves that are dead so just here you can see the glow plug i've taken the plug off it here which is this black one and i've put my positive probe in there from the multimeter now i'm going to connect up my negative probe to the battery and you can see that's beeping so there's continuity between the earth between there and there so when i switch the ignition on that should stop beeping and we should get some voltage on there um, some cars are 5 volts or under and then some cars are 12 volts but most cars these days are under 5 volts so you see like 3 to 5 volts so let's reach in and get to the ignition ignition on and it stopped beeping and we've got 3.1 3.2 volts there so that is working, so it's going to need blood glow plugs replacing, I think. I think any mechanic that knows these engines are renowned for the glow plug snapping. In fact, this is the only engine I've ever had a glow plug snap on myself. I've changed hundreds of glow plugs in different cars, and this 1.6 engine is the only one vehicle that I've ever snapped glow plugs on. So thankfully that doesn't need a glow plug relay because as far as I'm aware you've got to remove the front bumper, headlight wing and it's in behind there somewhere. Okay now we're going to start the car up and we'll see what the particle filter pressure is like there now once we run the engine. So we've got 160, 178, 180 on takeover. Let's accelerate up. 289, 360, 380, oh, we've got 400 is still, still increasing. So that DPF fluid in there, it doesn't just flush the fluid straight out, the soot straight out, it just softens it up. Once you accelerate it for five, five minutes, it gets it warm, then it'll start breaking it down. So we've got about 450 there. Now within a couple of minutes of the engine running, you can see it's drastically dropping there so we should get that down I think to under 10 really well on idle it should be 1 0 to 1 maximum uh, on full acceleration like this you want less than 50 We can't get full acceleration, of course. It's only 3,000 RPM it's limited to. So she's just left a little patch on the floor there. That'll dry up soon, though. So we'll let go of the accelerator now, and let's see what um, what we have on idle. So it's going to take a while to settle there, but it'll be dropping down slowly.
So it's holding at about six, seven there now, is it? Or is it still dropping? So we've got a little bit more to go. But the uh, the vehicle's not warmed up probably yet. Almost at, at the centre of the thermostat there. So what I'm going to do is just going to switch it off for a minute. And see if we clear the codes, will it allow us to accelerate a little bit further? Glow plug control, relay control, faulty signal. Uh, we'll just um, take note of these codes that we've got here. Now we clear them. Okay, so the remaining code we've got is the glow plug. Start it back up. Now we'll keep an eye on these uh, levels again. So we've got full revs now. And uh, the thing is with some cars is even when they don't have an engine light on, some cars are limited to 3000 when, you're, when the car is stationary anyway. Okay, so what I'm gonna do just to finish that off is trigger off a particle regeneration. Now, just in a few seconds, the car should accelerate on its own. And here we go, she's starting to accelerate. So that, once that reaches a, a low enough pressure, that will automatically stop. Okay, so that run for around about four or five minutes, and now it's stopped, so we'll go back to the live data. And we'll find the pressure sensor now again. Where are we at? Diesel pressure and the temperature. Just kick them up to the top. So now we're on three millibars or pascals. And we'll hold it at 3000 RPM, see where we go. Accelerate up and down. So 67. It's it's a little bit higher than I'd like it, but it's 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 in a reasonable area there. So I'll do a, f a full load acceleration just for a couple of seconds and see where it where it goes to. So yeah, it's plenty good enough really. So we'll go back out of here now, go into the codes and see what codes we have. Okay, so we're just left with the glow relay there. So uh, we'll, we'll come back and sort that out on another video. And we'll see you next time.